bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. Do you understand? You want to know the reason why I love God so much is because of this. It's not because of what everybody in the world says. It's not because of what everybody in the church say. It's because when times got real rough and when times got real sticky, he was there. He My friends, do you know what's going on? God is on the move. All around the country, people are gathering to worship him and to love him and to praise him where are we are we joining in do we want to miss this enormous move of god are we going to miss this just because it's more comfortable to sit in our chairs at home the spirit is moving in our churches i'm telling you it's happening now don't miss it my friends be part of it we've been waiting for this for decades we went to see the movie Jesus Revolution recently, and I'm actually jealous of the people who were there at the time. Oh my gosh, friends of ours were actually literally baptized at Pirate's Cove. But we don't have to be jealous anymore. We can be part of what's happening today. The world needs this right now. Come back to church. Come be a part of this huge movement that is just starting. We don't have to miss a thing. Jesus is on the move, and I'm going to be a part of it. Will you? If you want to be successful as a Christian, you might be praying the wrong prayer. You see, in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14, we read this. In everything he did, he had great success because the Lord was with him. Now, this verse is talking about David. And after David went and slayed Goliath, he was sent on all these other military campaigns. And in every single campaign that he was sent on, he was successful. And I mean, really, really successful. He was great at what he did. And it's in this verse that we read that in everything he did, he had great success. Why? Because he was smart, because he was intelligent, because he was wise, because he was a great strategist. No, he was successful because the Lord was with him. So if you want to be successful, maybe stop praying about the outcome and start praying that you would draw closer to God. Which means that... <laughs> stop crying. It won't do any good. And anyway, you have a lot of work to do starting right now. <laughs> There is no such thing as a victimless sin. And I think this is something that the world really tries to sell, especially now that, oh, just do whatever you want. As long as you're not hurting someone, it's fine. But I also think this is something that Christians are tempted to say and feel. Be like, oh, this is bad, but at least I'm not hurting anyone. And I am preaching to myself here because I am often feel like I am tempted to think that about my sin. But for starters, there is always going to be at least one victim to your sin, and that is yourself. God hates sin because of what it does to us. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. But also, if you're okay with hurting yourself, which I think we often are, because you are hurting yourself with sin, that is going to bleed into other relationships in your life. We often don't see the repercussions of sin, but God sees it all. It is not that you are committing a victimless sin. It is that you can't see and are unaware of who the victim is. When I was a baby Christian, I didn't realize you could talk to Jesus all day. I thought it was just when you ate and went to bed. No, 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 no. It's a whole conversation. So now, every time someone makes me mad, I'm like, Lord, you better get a hold of that child. Or if I have a great day, I'm like, God, you are so good to me. You know, it's like this whole thing all day long. I love it. Our world might be a mess right now, but I woke up this morning blessed that I'm able to publicly declare that I am a Christian and a follower of Christ. I don't know about you, but I take that for granted. Hey, start right there. Listen to this scripture. Proverbs 13, verse 3 says, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that open wide his lips shall have destruction. See, when you're in situations that cause you to get angry, you got to be careful with the words you say because it can cause you to sin. The Bible says we got the power of life and death in our tongue, and those who like to speak a lot will weep the consequences. So you got to be careful with the words that you say. Even a fool is counted wise when he hold his peace. So hold your peace. When you keep your mouth closed in situations where you just feel like you just got to say something back, 
keep your mouth closed and you will keep your life the bible says whoever keepeth his mouth keepeth his life don't allow the enemy to cause you to sin because the bible says be sober be vigilant because the adversary the devil as a roman lion waiting about seeking to whom he may devour the devil is always waiting on you he's trying to get you to fall he's trying to get you to fall into temptation he's trying to get you to fall into sin so you must be aware of the devil at all times don't allow the enemy to cause you to sin peace i'll see you on this video what? What? Isn't it funny that people will believe that rocks and trees will give them spiritual energy? But then they think it's silly for us to believe that someone died because he loved us? Jesus loves you. People are always like, your standards are too high. Honey, my standards are in heaven with the Lord. They're not coming down anytime soon, okay? Happy Sunday. Guys, we're live on the scene. We want to know everybody's favorite worship song. <laughs> what is your current favorite worship song? Um, let's say, What Can I Do by Ty Trebet. Okay. I like, I, like, right. um, I like Sons and Daughters, Shout Out Calvary Worship. Hearing Your Presence? Mm. I don't know the name of the song, but the one that goes, Give me Jesus. That's what it's called, Gimme Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the favorite that's song good, right That one's fire, that's yes. fire. Current favorite worship song is an old song by Morningstar called Show Me Your Face, and it was redone by Upper Room and uh, Jesus Image. Glory, honor, and power. Glory, honor, and power. Yeah. Give me Jesus, so that is awesome right now. Go-to is um, Como Te Amamos uh, in Yeshua by Karen Espinosa. Fire. Fuego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Praise is working. Firm foundation. Firm foundation. Firm foundation. We want to know what is your current favorite worship song? Accepted by Calvary Worship on our new album, Declarations. So, my pastor wrote one called No Hay Nadie Como Tu. There's no one like you, Jesus. And it just, you know. Okay, my current favorite worship song is a little old. It's called New Wine by Hillsong. That one has been on replay since January. My favorite worship song right now is No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus by Stephanie Gretzinger. It gets me every yes, time. Definitely. So good. My current favorite worship song is actually Calvary Worship. It's a song called Accepted. What is the hardest thing about being a Christian teenager? I think definitely um, the group attitudes that you feel that's against you. I think it's just that like your lives are always going to be different from the people that you see around you, you know. There are people that are just um, wanting you to fail as a Christian. If you say, oh I'm going to youth on Friday or I'm going to church on Sunday or something, they'll be like, oh you go to church club? And they'll just like laugh at you and you're like, yeah. <laughs> it's really hard because you have to think about oh, some of these things that me and my friends are wanting to do. Would they be good to do as a Christian? Are they godly sort of thing, you know? Have you ever had a dream that that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want you you could do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything? Hey, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ who accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and they're remaining the same. You should not come to Christ and remain the same. You should not come to Christ and still be the same person you were when you were in the world. When you give your life to Jesus, when you say, Jesus, I want to give my life to you, I accept you as Lord and Savior, that means that you are divorcing the world and you are going to be a new creation in Christ, meaning that you need to change. The way you speak, the way you dress, the way you act needs to change. You cannot stay the same. You have to start honoring the Word of God. You have to start honoring God. You have to start honoring the position of other leaders and elders in the body of Christ. You have to submit yourself underneath the covering, submit yourself to a leader, submit yourself to a church that can disciple you, that can uh, keep you accountable so that you can change. Do not be part of a church that doesn't hold you accountable, that doesn't help you to change, that doesn't help you to grow. It defeats the purpose. You come to Christ so you can you can change and you can change other people's lives. God has called us to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to preach the gospel. And that's not going to happen if you remain the same. And
and you stay on your couch or you stay on your bed as a Christian that does not want to change and stay the same. Go out there and change. Read the word and pray and become a disciple in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ.